The musical, The Drowsy Chaperone, celebrates musical comedies. It celebrates weddings. And the production recently at the Webster University Conservatory celebrated the talents and abilities of the students who performed and designed it. The Drowsy Chaperone is really two shows, a silly musical set within a comedy. The musical purports to be from the 1920s. The comedy is from today. It has one character. The musical, The Drowsy Chaperone, is that character's favorite show, and he plays the LP of the show for us, magically evoking the original cast to perform it. The book and score of The Drowsy Chaperone poke fun at the silliness of those 1920s musicals, and it pokes fun at the people like our host who love those musicals. But it loves those musicals, too. It knows that those plots were never meant to be taken seriously. They were just excuses for songs, jokes, and virtuoso performances. You can hear the affection for Kern and Porter and Gershwin in the songs written by Lisa Lambert and Greg Morrison. Book writers Bob Martin and Don McKellar smartly parody those silly plots and clever theatricality. You need performers who can do justice to those songs, jokes, and virtuoso performances, celebrating both the virtuosity and the silliness. And that we had at the Webster Conservatory. Chase Thomaston was lovable as our host, Man in Chair, as Janet, the bride who's giving up her career as a Broadway star. Brenna Noble amazed when Janet demonstrates the star turn she claims no longer to care for. Jacob Scott as Robert the Groom roller skated and shared a tap number with Liam John Johnson, the best man, Aaron Stapleton stumbled amusingly along as the drowsy, or tipsy, chaperone, wooed by Michael Grieve, the Latin lover, Rebecca Russell as the charmingly vague Mrs. Tottendale, who was hosting the wedding in her mansion, was kept on track by Landon Tate Boyle as her butler, Underling. Jack Zanger played Janet's worried Broadway producer, losing his star, and Mariah Studebaker, his ambitious girlfriend. Bradley Fertitta and Jacob Fleckier revived comic routines as a pair of gangsters posing as pastry chefs. Don't ask. Jen Sinnon, as Trix the Aviatrix, took charge of the finale because every 20s musical must fly down to Rio. Andrew Altman brought light as the apartment building super and joined the talent-loaded ensemble of Spencer Cruz, Hunter Bell, Kara Overlean, Austin Daniel Bomer, Caroline Adams, and Sophie Merck. Jordan Lamagna's scenery, Will Vicari's costumes, Crystal Belize's wigs and makeup, Natalie Arco's lighting, and Marion Eyre's sound all splendidly celebrated 1920s styles, as did the work of director Melissa Rain Anderson, music director Larry D. Pry, and choreographer Ellen Isom. This was the fifth time I've seen The Drowsy Chaperone, and this production made it fresh again. It certainly did. I just loved it. It was lots of fun, so let's hear some of it. <laughs> Well, you must agree.